Welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. But before we start the episode, please get your device and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. And also subscribe to the guests here and remind you everybody, it takes a minute because we're doing this our very best to bring you the best entertainment while you're at home or working from home during this pandemic. So, you know, just, you know, it takes two seconds just to comment to say, hey, you like the thing, you like the show, you like the guests, and that's it. But today I got a very special guest, and he is doing very well. He works with a lot of people that have challenges, but they're not really challenges, they're obstacles and how they overcome them. So with no other further ado, I'm going to introduce to you Jay Stoin, founder of the Disability Channel. Hi, D. <laughs> How are you? Good. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. I, I really appreciate that. Great show, uh, by the way. Great show, well, by the way. You're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. You know, you're doing a lot for, for people and, you know, some people that are regular people have disabilities, but you know you're doing for for things for making changes in people's lives and in the in that aspect. I think we all have a one one or one or two disabilities. I think everybody every I think everybody has a little bit of a disability. So if we can, can be self. Yeah, we can we can, can be help people. disabilities or what, what's that? Like? They can be self-inflicted disabilities, some people. Absolutely. Yep. So we're here to, to showcase the opportunities and to sort support people. But again, I want to thank you for having me on your show today. It's a, it's a great honor. All right. And can you tell everybody where you come from and your background? Sure. So I'll give you a little bit of a history of the channel. The channel is the no, disability. No, I want to ask about you. Where are you Oh, myself. From? Okay. Yes. So, uh, Jay Stoyan. I'm a Toronto bred. I grew up in Scarborough. I've been working in the media for now about 20 years. I came from the corporate world uh, on Bay Street, sold my business, started a new career called entertainment back in, I'm going to say 2007. Uh, became a published author. Somebody published a life uh, my life called Flanagan's Life Inside an Irish Street Gang. I was a little bit of a rascal when I was a youngster growing up in Scarborough, like we all were growing up in Scarborough. <laughs> growing well, up in Scarborough. Not, maybe, not, maybe not everybody. Not everybody. But <laughs> growing up in Scarborough in the late 70s and 80s, yeah, you, you had to sort of, it was a little bit, it was a little different back then. You had to stick up for yourself and you, you know, ups and downs. So, anyways. Fast so you forward. were part of a motorcycle gang? No, 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 no. I was just I was just part of a, a, a rough little crowd in my neighborhood. <laughs> right? like every, every every neighborhood had a rough a rough little crowd, right? Everybody had to protect their turf, right? It was great. It was great. It was great back then. So, uh, yeah, two thousand seven. Um, now, what type of business did you do down on Bay Street? So I had a I had a family jewelry corporation that I used to run for since I was 16 and I sold it when I was in my early 30s and we used to um, create gift packages for all the, the big corporations down in the first Canadian place like, you know, Bank of Montreal or uh, Deloitte Touche or, you know, all, all the big firms, stock exchange and it was wonderful. So we used to do a lot of corporate business for them. I knew a lot of great, um, had a great, a lot of great corporate relationships. And then I sold it in 2002 because in 2001, we all know what happened with 9 11. Uh -huh. right? And my building was owned by the Reichmans, who are one of the most prominent Jewish families around the world. Okay. And unfortunately, the first Canadian place became a target. It became a target for terrorists. And. Yeah. Yeah, it became a target for terrorists because wow. it was it was the number it was you know the tallest corporate building in Canada and it was owned by the Reichmans who are Jewish, okay. and uh, my business fell by fifty percent because a lot of my clients were 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 Jewish, right? I I love the Jewish community, I support them, but a lot of them they got scared in that building and they they went home or they went somewhere else. So I had a competitor who was bugging me for about. Uh, about seven years to sell my business because he wanted my location. So in 2002, I pulled the trigger. 
uh, sold the business, made a nice little tidy profit and kind of retired. Right. So I was in my early 30s and I'm going, what am I going to do? And you're, and you're still and you're still 30, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still there. I'm still there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I decided, I said, I don't know, what am I going to do? And I said, well, I can talk. That's what I thought. I can talk. I'm, I can't do anything else very well, but I can talk. So I said, I'm going to get into the entertainment business. And everybody looked at me and said, what? Like, you have no experience. You've never taken an acting class. Like, you've never been on, like, you've never been on stage. I go, well, what are you talking about? Well, I said, this is the time I have, I have a little nest egg, sold my business. I have a little nest egg so I can retire for a couple of years. And so what I did is I sat down and I put my life together on paper. By the time from the age of say 13 to the age of 26, I wrote my life and that was called life inside an Irish street gang. And it became somebody and I, I tried to shop it to become a movie script. I knew a couple of people in Hollywood. So I tried to shop it. In the meantime, a friend of mine was a chef down at one of the entertainment district pubs. Um, I forget what it's called now. Pearl, Pearl Lounge, Pearl Lounge. That's what it was called. Right in the entertainment. district. He was a chef. So he was a chef. So he says, what are you doing, Jay? You're retired. Why don't you come down and hang out at the club? And I went, I mean, I'm not 20. Why? Like, I don't know. So I went down there just to go down to have a coffee with him. And it was closed. So I'm going, how come the club's closed? And he goes, oh, it's only open Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. And I said, well, what do they do with the rest of the time? And he went, nothing, it's closed. I went, and I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a businessman. So I'm thinking, well, there might be some opportunity here to make some money for the club and me. And the chef, my friend said, oh, what do you got in mind, Jay? I said, well, I have a couple of people I know in the entertainment business and they throw rap parties. And he says, what's a rap party? I said, after they finish a production, they rent out a hall or a bar or whatever and have a party. The whole crew, team, staff have parties. And that's a way to give back to their to their staff. And he went, do you know anybody? I said, yeah, I know a couple of people. Lo and behold, I had uh, Blue Murder. Remember Blue Murder, the TV show, Canadian TV show, the cop show called Blue Murder? It was okay, pretty yeah. good, pretty big. It was a pretty big show. So I had their rap party at the bar private party all the the team like they had like you know two understaffed members from the production they all came in closed door had a party i was the boss for the night because the owner of the bar we we became friends and he said here's a key jay whatever you know make some money make some money for the club and <laughs> see how it goes well it was very successful in the meantime i saw so i threw a couple more parties for a couple more uh tel television shows and one of the, and I was in charge of taking care of all the producers, right? Like it was my club for the night, you could say, right? So the producers would ask me, so Jay, what do you do? And I told them and they said, wow. One of them said, that sounds like a movie. And I went, what? He goes, yeah, your life, that could be made into a movie. Cause you got bikers, you got the mob and you ran a street gang. And I went, Oh, I'm not doing anything else, but I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to write. Like I went to school, but most of the time I was in the park, you know, <laughs> I was 16. So I, I, I picked up a, a book called Sid Fields, uh, professional screenwriting. And I, and I, and I sort of researched it and pr started practicing writing for the next two years, about four years down the road. I had a script all my life. I had a script. I had a hundred and hundred page script send it to a couple of people I knew in LA and I got a meeting and I got a meeting with Dan Hefner, who is the producer of all the Saw series. Remember the Saw movies? Yes. All right. Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I had a very, I had a very influential uncle who helped me name Mr. Steve Stavros, who used to own the Maple Leafs. So I went That's to see him. Uncle? Yeah, he was my uncle. Yeah. Yeah. He, he passed okay. away, right? He oh, passed okay. away. Yeah, he passed away uh, about maybe 10 years ago, but he's the one. So this is a funny story, D. Lucky you got 45 minutes. No. <laughs> so here's a, here's a funny no, story. Oh my God, there's so, people getting to know you. Yeah, so here's a funny story. So I asked my dad, hey, dad, you know, I'm trying to break into the business. I don't know what to do. He goes, you know what? Maybe I'll call Uncle Steve. Okay. So Uncle Steve just bought the Constellation. He just sold the Maple Leafs. I think he made over $600 million. 
not bad. Ooh. So he just he bought the Constellation Hotel out at the airport. So he was renovated. So my dad put in the call and he said, "Okay, send your tell your son to come see me." Because he doesn't really know me, but he knows me. But he knows my dad. So I go see him. I go to the hotel. And I walk into the lobby that's still under renovation. And this big giant bodyguard must have been seven feet tall. Comes out of the comes out of the shadows and goes, Who are you? And I said, Oh, I'm here to see Mr. Stavro. And who are you? I said, I'm the hockey player's son. Oh, you're the hockey player's son. My dad was drafted by the by the Chicago Blackhawks. So down comes Mr. Stavro, right? I, and you are, I said, oh, I'm, uh, I'm George's son. Oh, the hockey player. You're Jay, right? I said, yeah, come on in my office, Jay. Change like that. Because when my dad and Steve Stavro were both teenagers, my dad was 15, Steve was 19, say. My dad was a Marley, Toronto Marler, right? Toronto Marley, right? Steve Stavro used to get free tickets from my dad. My dad would give him tickets to come to the game before Steve Stavro turned into a billionaire when he was just a hardworking 19 year old, right? My dad would give him tickets, come to the game, Steve, free tickets. You want a hockey stick? Take a hockey stick. If you need a full road hockey, my dad would get free sticks from the Marlins, right? Well, 50 years later, here comes the favor. So I walk in, the big bodyguard, sit down with a guy, Mr. Stavro, call me, call me Uncle Steve, Jay. Okay, Uncle Steve. So. You know, connections, right? It's all about relationships, family, connections. Picks up the phone uh, to a place called Cinespace. Hi, Jim. Steve here. Listen, I have my nephew. He's trying to break into the business. I wonder if you can meet with him and maybe give him some, you know, advice, tips. Done. Went down there. Lo and behold, he put me on to Dan Hefner, who was in the third Saw movie. Remember the Saw movies, those horror movies? I can't, mm-hmm. I can't watch. I didn't really them. watch those too much. No, I can't watch. I can't watch. But they were very successful, right? So I met Dan down at the Chelsea Hotel. And I tell you, D, this business that we're in, you know, is so hard. Like, yeah. I used to go to meetings and people would not show up and would not apologize because they yeah, didn't they have don't care. They don't have to. You need me. I don't need you so I can be as rude and ignorant to you as I want. And you'll still call me because you need me. So that's just, that's that's just a a tip for people. It's a hard business. Another tip I used to do is I used to email myself because I wouldn't get email for days. And I'm going, (laughs) is my email working? I'm not getting any emails. So I'd email myself. Yep. There's an email. So it's very hard. So anyways, Steve went, I met Dan, went to the Chelsea Hotel. He read my script and said, Jay, you know, it's not bad, but it needs some work. And my reply was, I will do whatever it takes, Dan. And he went, that's what I want to hear. Because if you said anything else, meeting's done. Because again, I'm a billionaire. I don't need to be here. I'm here for as a favor to your uncle. But when you said, I'll do whatever it takes, that's what I want to hear. And he pushed me along. Now it didn't turn into a movie, but he pushed it to a publisher who turned it into a novel, became just under a bestseller, right? Uh, in Canada, did all the, the, the book tour, WH Smith, Coles, Barnes and Noble, blah, blah, blah. And then I wound up at on an online show with our, a companion that channel that channel took me to rogers right rogers took me to fox i had a late night show on fox um after friends for an hour like a variety show my first guest was frank sinatra jr which was amazing probably my wow. still, still my best guest to this day the most humble man probably the most famous man that i ever interviewed well i don't know about the most famous but could i interviewed oprah and a couple other people but um, he was so nice to me. I, I, I can share another story. So this is our debut on Fox. This is with, with Ashley, right? This is our debut on Fox with Ashley. So it was called the Jay Stoyne show for people that don't know. Yeah. The Jay Stoyne show on Fox after friends for now, a variety show. So we used to touch on music, hot topics, entertainment, whatever, right? Everything. So I think I had Frank's and, and I work with, and then people that know that I work with Jay. Yep. 
we, we had Frank Sinatra on. We had the, the the Playboy Bunny, and we had the magician. Remember the magician? And ha Ashley almost passed out. Yeah. So Frank Sinatra <laughs> Jr. So he's coming into the he's coming into the studio, and I thought he's going to come out come with an entourage. He came with one assistant. So nice, so humble. Jay, I'm so happy to be on your show. I'm going. <laughs> really? Okay. Like, I can, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sinatra. No, no. Mr. Sinatra's my dad. I'm Frank. So he goes back up a bit. He goes, Jay, do you want me or do you want my 16 piece band in your studio? I said, I would love your 16 piece band, but my studio is not big enough for that. So let's just take you. So he comes down. He says, Jay, before we go on the air, is there a little place we can sit and talk? Absolutely. Wine, a little bit of champagne, a little bit of fruit we had him for, all done up. He says, you know, I just got two requests. Please don't ask me about my dad during the interview and don't ask me about being kidnapped. Mm. Fair enough. Come on the air. What's the first thing he does? He starts talking about his dad. Like, <laughs> it was great. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm a kid. I'm in a room and here comes Dino and Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart. I'm on Sammy Davis's Jr.'s lap. He's tapping away. I'm going, oh, my God, this is gold. So I say to Frank, Mr. Snodger, no, no, Frank. I say, so, Frank, when was when do you realize that you think you made it? And he goes, Jay, I'm still waiting. And I went, wow, you're how classy, how humble. And then he gave me two pieces of advice, which was, don't ever lie to the camera because the camera right. knows if you're lying. And if you're bored with the interview or whatever you're doing, your viewers were bored five minutes earlier. That's true. And he says, that's great. I said, wow, that's great. advice." And he goes, keep your passion, Jay. I can say, I can tell in your eyes that you're really, really excited about this interview. I said, I am. Like I brought my mom and dad. Like remember my mom and dad were there, right? <laughs> My dad's, I mean, my dad, I mean, my dad's in his 80s. Who's who's not in their 80s and not a Sinatra fan? Like, so lots of experiences like that, but Fox didn't know I had an illness, right? I never told Fox I had an illness because chances are they would have just pushed me to the side, right? So I did that for about a year. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Well, wait, and you got sick? I never got sick. No, I never got sick when I was on Fox, luckily. Okay. If I got sick, who knows? They probably would have let me go. Or I, I mean, I never told them. But okay. after about a year or so, I kind of got a little bored, right? Just okay. interviewing great people doing, you know, personal great things, but not really game changers for the community, right? Like they're doing great things. You know, they score a hat trick. They got a new film coming out. Like I'm really happy. But I needed more. I wasn't 20 year old, 20 years anymore. I wasn't awestruck by, you know, people. I needed substance mm -hmm. and I needed a niche. I needed a substance and I needed a niche. And nobody really knew I had an illness, which I have familiar Mediterranean fever, which is an incurable illness, which I've been around North America as a kid. And then they finally sent me home and said, no, no, he's, he has an illness. So I kind of created a, the business for myself, in case I got sick, I could come back, right? I wouldn't get fired, right? Um, and then, as it turned out, I did that. And one thing led to another. And I interviewed now my business partner, Frank Sroka. And the reason I interviewed him is I went to the Ontario Disability Support Program because I am I have an illness. And I wanted to see if I could help people with disabilities, right? Just... Not really. I didn't really know how I wanted to help them, but I wanted to showcase them and give them a voice, give them an opportunity. I didn't really think about giving them a job at the moment. That wasn't really my goal because, you know, I was still expanding. So when I had Frank on, he owned a disability agency and he was involved in media, but not really media, but he wanted to be involved in media. But I'm media. So he was a disability. I'm going, wow we could really do some great things together because you know the whole world about disability employment. And I know a little bit about production because this is what I do. So one thing led to another, we started creating programs. Well, he was already doing it. And when I came on, we advanced it, right? So we create, started creating very detailed employment programs for persons with disabilities and veterans in the media. Right. And 
right? And and we had the concept and Frank was already doing it a little but when I came on board, we brought on a television element and we ramped it up about like 150%. So, but it didn't. But it didn't happen all at one time because it made because people might out there might perceive that oh this just happened overnight. It took time, right? You want to see the scars on my back? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, do you know, favor, I, it's it's because oh what I'm selling, right? I'm selling persons with disabilities and veterans who have been through the ringer. You know what I mean? They have, they have, they have their, they have their issues. They have their obstacles, but they deserve an opportunity like everybody else. But unless you're attached to that world or you're just that type of person out of sight, out of mind, you got your own priorities. So what we're doing for these, for, you know, for my community, it's a, it's a, it's a tough slog, but I'm very extremely tenacious and I, I won't, you know, I, I, I try a thousand doors and eventually I get through the right door. Right. And this is what I do, right? So this is what we're doing now. So we created it and everybody still said, no, 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 no. What are you yeah. doing? But, you know, I kept on banging. And I banged on the Ontario government door for four years and they opened the door. And now we have an 85% success rate and a contract with the Ontario government through 2025. And we're expanding across Canada and now into the USA, giving the same type of program opportunities to persons with disabilities and veterans in media, but you don't even have to be disabled or a veteran. If you just want to upgrade your skills, if you're down on your luck, if you just need a change, we're, we're open. You can just go to our website, www.thedisabilitychannel.ca. D can give out my information. You can contact yeah, me. You can give out the information. <laughs> yeah, I mean six four seven. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? You can just yes. give it out, and then at so the end, at the end, at the end. But what inspires you, Jay, to to do what you do every day? You know what it. You know what it is. I think D is. I love a challenge, and I love to grind it out. I love to grind it out and make make something a success that it's not easy to make a success. You know what I mean? I just like that challenge. I just, I mean, I could take the easy route and do something else. And I could probably go get a job as a host on may, maybe one of the major networks or Sirius XM or like one of the stations. I know I could probably do it. I've been doing it for such a long time, but <laughs> that's not enough. That's not, I'd rather help people. I'd rather help people. And it's very rewarding to, like Crystal, my girlfriend goes, <laughs> you're probably the least humble person I know and have the most confidence I know. But when it comes to your business, you do not brag or you're very humble when it comes to your business, Jay. And I, and I say, I don't know. That's just, I feel like I'm blessed. I'm in a position to do this. And it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just like you to don't do really it. think about it. You're just going, I don't think, story. but yeah, I don't think I just do it. I just love to do it. And to see somebody who needs an opportunity to smile and, you know, they're succeeding. That's what it's all about. So that's what we do. That's what we do with the channel. And I got lots of events coming up and we could talk, but ask me questions. I'll, <laughs> well, okay. So you, you know, you've gone through this journey and stuff. So who have you worked with? Worth? I know you said Frank Sinatra. So who have you worked with? Uh, okay. So let's go back. Okay. So some of the interviews I've done, some of the people work with Rob Ford. I, I interviewed, I interviewed Rob Ford three or four times, including when he was going downhill. And I tell oh, you, oh, you did him when he was, oh, okay. Yeah, including when he was going, I interviewed him. I think I interviewed Rob Ford either the day of when he was at Steak Masters later that night, right? So, I mean, say what you want about Rob, but when he was on camera and when he was okay, he was great. Yeah. Very yeah. personable, very friendly. I liked him as a businessman. It's unfortunate that, you know, he did yeah. what he, you know he had, had his troubles unfortunate i interviewed his uh, his brother the premier now mr ford he's he's called me on the phone i've interviewed doug great guy great guy um 
all the all the hockey players from Wendell Clark to Don Cherry to we just interviewed Eric Lindros at the Easter Seals, all the NFL players, Tom Brady, the Gronk, Aaron Rodgers, uh, baseball players, all the politicians, David Onley, Lieutenant Governor David Onley, the, the, the current one, Lieutenant Governor Elizabeth Dowdswell. Um, yeah, I don't know, Oprah, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Oprah, like I've been to the the, the film oh, festival. Oh, you interviewed Oprah too. Tiff, yeah, Tiff. We interviewed Oprah, Ewan McGregor. The only guy I didn't interview because they wouldn't let us was his publicist wouldn't let us was George Clooney because his publicist came up and said to me that he's had a couple of drinks, <laughs> and when he's had a couple of drinks, he looks, <laughs> he says some stuff that oh. So I said no, no, no problem, no problem. So yeah, so it's a it's pretty good, but again, we showcase everything through our employment program. So we're on television here in, in uh, Toronto. We're on uh, Coach Co, right? You can check okay. us out, Channel 700. Hopefully we're going to be uh, collaborating with UD and we're also on television in uh, the USA in Detroit, spreading across uh, America. So we're on Are you guys in Wisconsin? And what Wisconsin. channel are you guys on in Wisconsin? Uh, we're on the, the local Spectrum channel. So we're affiliated with a couple of networks down in the USA. Kojiko has a has an affiliate called Atlantic down in the USA. So again, we're just we're just sort of reaching out to the USA. Like we're in Wisconsin. We're deb- actually we're debuting our uh New York. We have a flagship show called the Today Show. Right. So we have about Whoa. yeah, we have about I think seven seven today shows. And our goal is to have a today show in every province and in every state and have a, like a good morning America show every morning. Right. Right now we're okay. not, we're not at that level yet, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're spreading. So right now we're debuting our, so we have a show in New, uh, Detroit. We just got word that Lansing's going to be taking our Lansing, Michigan's going to be taking our show. Uh, Wisconsin we're debuting this week in New York because we have a really big uh, debut show. One of our hosts uh, keeping it real with Nick. Uh, Nick Hurd, I think you might know Nick D. Um, he has Down syndrome. And oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he has Down syndrome. So he's a bona fide actor. He belongs with us. He has a uh, he's host on our platform. And he's also a member of Larsh Canada. And he directed a short film called Freebird, which you can watch an interview on our platform that is on the long list right now. Well, it's called the short list, but it's kind of long for uh, for the Oscars, for the Oscars. So he's going to be shortlisted down on December 21st and then shortlisted again. If he gets down to the top five, that means his short film, which he directed is an animated film showcasing Down syndrome, is going to be one of the nominees at the Oscars. So we might be going to the Oscars. Yeah, that and then we're going we're going again. Fifth year in a row, we're going back to the Super Bowl. So we're in media with Dave Stevens. We're going to be in Media Road uh, February 13th. So that's our fifth year. So we're working closely with the NFL, uh, Easter Seals, Canada, and the USA. Actually, I'm, I have a meeting at three o'clock today with the NFL. So we're working closely with the NFL and concussions. And I uh, spoke this morning in, in Colorado at a big uh, uh, veteran conference. So we're really big on supporting veterans, persons with disabilities, and then able body. Like, you know, we're here to help you guys sort of thing, you could say. So what type of shows um, do you have on your um, uh, disability, the disability channel? That's a great question. So again, our flagship show, the Today Show, showcases kind of like it's a generic show, right? So we talk about hot topics in our community and hot topics in general. I mean, we, it's just not all about disability or ability issues. We're, you know, we're, we're mainstream now, right? So, but that's our flagship show. And that just sort of talks about, you know, does interviews, kind of talks more about, our world, right? What's going on in our world, any updates. And then we have other shows like we have uh, in December, we debuted two new shows, which is our TDC classic cars. Right? What? So, yeah. Classic cars. So we have a classic car. Actually, I was watching the edit this morning. It's, it might even be up on our website now on our TV channel. So what we're doing is we're showcasing, uh, there's a real good shop out in Scarborough called, uh, Picture vehicle specialties. And it's amazing. And what they do, D, is they configure automobiles for the film industry. So 
Fast and Furious or whatever, and they need cars. Well, wow. here's a shop that Is goes. Is it Ontario? It's Ontario. It's in Scarborough. So what they wow. it's, it's So we were in there. We did our debut show, and we had a military truck behind us on this side and a copycat of the Charger, which a lot of your older fans will know from Bullet, right? The movie wow. Bullet with Steve McQueen. So it's all about talking about cars, the people behind the cars, involving accessibility, and just showcasing these, you know, these, but not just muscle cars, right? It's going to be all different types of automobiles, maybe cars from the 50s, military, uh, current, you know, high-end cars. So so that's one show. Another show so we can have. Can people purchase the cars uh, if they see something or are they just for the show? I'm sure you could. I mean, what we're doing right now is we're going to. the white price. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be creating. It's really cool because what he does with the, the shop owner he goes out to like his team go out to farms across Canada and find chassis that are just sitting in the fields and then they rebuild the cars. Wow. So classic. Yeah. So we're going to be doing that where I'm looking for a Chevelle right now. I want to do that. I want to do that for myself. I want to build a Chevelle and put it on the show as part of the part of the show. So it's, I'm a car guy, but by my, by no means am I like a mechanic car guy, but I'm a car guy. <laughs> So I can, change, I can change the tire and change the oil, but maybe but maybe not, not the oil anymore because I don't. You think don't you do body anymore. work and all that. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we have that, and then we have um, uh, we have a music show called uh, Wild Child Records, and uh, oh, I remember them. Yeah, Wild Child Records. So you know, I was big in music back in the day, right? So Wild Child Records. So actually, I just introduced our new host uh, last week. Could I? I sort of do the the uh, the pilots, and then I sort of move people in, and I move on. So we have a wonderful new host, Kay Parker, which, as far as I know now, and I might be letting the cat out of the bag a little bit, but I don't think so because I talked to her yesterday. Uh, she's going to be hosting Canadian Music Week. Oh. So we're going to be there. Our music show is going to be there, so it's awesome. So, where yeah, so what we do... Where are they hosting the Canadian Music Weekend? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure where it is, where but I'll find, out. I'll, I'll find out. I mean, yeah, so she's going to be the host, and she's the host of my music show, so we're going to be there filming the event, hopefully. So, awesome. This is great. We're really... Hold on to your horses. <laughs> oh, yes. So we're going to showcase independent and mainstream artists, and I'd like to go to their studios. Let's go to your studio and I'll showcase your studio and interview you and then you can play a little bit of music. So it's really, uh, it's, it's really fun that we have a sports show, right? Okay. So that's where we go all of our events. We get, we get accreditations. We get media for all the big events, Super Bowl, World Series, Stanley Cup, um, and NBA finals or anything, anything, right? We can go so anywhere. So do you want. go actually to the events or you just bring it in? I don't go. Dave goes. Dave goes okay. and his team. It depends where it is. If it's in Canada, I might go. But if it's in the U.S., I, I have a U.S. team and they go sort of thing. Okay. So it's good. So we have that. Then we have a socially service uh, show, which is focuses all about the agencies and opportunities and updates and information and education. Uh, we have a community show called Let's Chat. We have our veteran show called Veterans Onward to Prosperity, all about job ready training. Transition. So what happened? Is that when, when the veterans retire, what are they doing after? Or yeah, they tra yeah, transition. Good question. Yeah, transitioning from the battlefield to the workforce, right? Oh, and, this okay. is, and this is where we help them transition. So they get off the battlefield, they need a new skill. They take our employment programs in media, and then we, because we outsource them, because we already have a lot of associates that are ready to hire people, right? So, so what do you do? You so like, let's walk everybody through this. Hold on. So it's some because there's probably a lot of veterans and different people. I can tell you right now how we do it. So this is what we do. Mm -hmm. So let's just okay. For instance, we have a course, a new course. Mm -hmm. We usually do about say ten courses a year, but they all vary, right? Different dates, different times. So we have a okay. course starting in January called SAO. It's our Accessible Media course, and it's out of Mohawk College. And actually, if you live in that region, it is free. So. For your viewers now, D, they should, if they wanted to learn a course, if they live in a Halton and they're disabled or a veteran, mm -hmm. they can get in touch with you because we have a course starting in January. It's a 14 week course, okay. which is free, free. And it's two days a week, Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday, four hours a day online, right? Online. And you learn all about how to become a social media person. Whether that's online, holding a camera, hosting, 
blogging, websites, audio, 14 weeks. And at the end of the 14 weeks, you get a certificate and we get you a job, right? That's what it's all about. And you work with our teachers and you work hot for 14 weeks. You're, you're upgrading your skills. You're practicing your skills. So let's just say on the Monday, you learn your skill. On the Tuesday, you prep it for Wednesday is when you're going to implement it. So we okay. actually teach you what we teach you. We watch you do it. So at the end of the 14 weeks, you can go into an interview and someone says to you, okay, can you edit? Yeah. Okay. Show me how to edit this little minute clip. He's there. Do, okay. do, 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 do. They're done. Or can you, I like, you know, I'm not a teacher, right? So I'm not one of the teachers, but <laughs> absolutely, yeah. they should, they should, yeah, they should get in touch with us if they want, if they're interested in that. Well, that's good. That's, um, that's good to know for people that are veterans or disabled or something. So they go on online. That's, 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 that's fabulous. And we have a, we had a, we had a, we had a drone. I, I didn't tell you, we had a drone ball drop fundraiser. This was, this I was, was going to ask him about that. <laughs> this is great. So on October 14th, and we raised $10,000 for our programs, which is amazing. So we had two big sponsors. Cleveland okay. Clinic is one of our sponsors. They're actually one of our partners. Okay. And a, a major law firm called Gardner Roberts down in Toronto was our sponsor too. So what happened October 14th is, we had a drone, say drone, right? A drone. So drone ball drop fundraiser. So on October, October 14th, we were at the Grand Niagara Golf Club in Niagara Falls. And a drone went up in the air, took 200 balls random from our registrations. Because I think we had over 1,500 registrations. And you watch it on camera because we filmed it. It's on our website too. Yeah. And it drops the balls. Closest one to the hole won a $500 value package at the grand niagara golf club holiday inn wine tour you get a wow. gift, gift package and then you get invited to the concert and it was great so it's a drone ball drop console it, it was and it worked great for the pandemic right for covid right because you know, no one's really needs to be each other and and all that now we're going to have one on february 22nd hopefully hopefully we're just confirming now at the Milwaukee Bucks Stadium in Wisconsin, inside. Woo! So the drone's going to go up inside the, the the Milwaukee Bucks Stadium and drop the balls. And this focus is going to be all for veterans. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. That's there's pretty. A lot good. of veterans out there. There was a lot of veterans everywhere, but there's a lot of veterans out in um, that area. Yeah. So we got a lot. We got the, So we got the Oscars, the Super Bowl. We do the Easter Seals Hockey Classics with Eric Lindros. The drone ball drop. Uh, our newsletter. Our newsletter, if people want to find out more, it'd be a great way to subscribe to our newsletter because we update it quarterly with all new stuff coming out, So, which is nice. Um, I'm just trying to think what other shows we have. I think that's it. And no, there's one show you're missing with Unstoppable Tracy. Well, Unstoppable Tracy now, yeah, Unstoppable Tracy, like she's a whirlwind of a girl. Now, she also, but she also hosts our Halton Today Show. Okay. So she has her she has her own show, Unstoppable Tracy, but I moved her. I mean, she still has a show, but she's such a, a an important part of our team that she definitely had to host one of our one of our uh, flagship shows. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you tell the people a little bit about how we know each other, D? <laughs> well, crazy. no, I told we worked together. I worked in the background and doing production, marketing, brand, and all that stuff. For, uh, for for Jay, the Jay Stowen show, and uh, we used to come down every. It was every Friday, right? Every, every Friday. Friday, like about ten yeah. years we've known you. We've known each other. Ten years, oh, God, years right? <laughs> Maybe longer. So I, I'm yeah. really happy with what I'm really happy with what you're doing, D. Because I know it's tough, right? Yeah, you it's gotta tough. come up with. You gotta come up. It's it's you, you gotta come up with ideas. You gotta make sure everybody's interesting, and you know people don't really know. What goes on, you know, some people think it's easy. Oh, I just can put up a show and no. <laughs> how's your, how is your, how is your music flavor these days? Cause I know you are like a big music girl too, right? Like you love mm -hmm. your music and all that. So how well, I do it every, every aspect of, of the industry, the music and stuff like we do, you know, if the, I've done A-listers, I've done guys that were with Motown, that their uncles in Motel, their cousin, all that. So, you know, and, and rock and roll guys, pop, I, I've done everybody. 
No, I love it. I remember, yeah, because you used to bring in such a great flavor, like like uh, like the reggae flavor when we used to have it on the show. Like I loved all those. I think those guys like they're they're fabulous. Like I love diversity. I love like I love all types of music. I'm a rock and roll yeah. guy, but yeah, I love country. I love my Bob Marley. You know, I love all that stuff. I think it's 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 so it's so classic. So you know what? Tell again. Tell all my viewers where people can watch you. Dean. Oh. Well, they can watch. Well, oh, on your new thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, it's, 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 I'm gonna show gonna, you on my channel, yeah. right? And I want people to know where they can watch you. Yeah, but well, it's on. It's, it's in Halton or something, Halton. Yeah, in but Halton. you don't say your channel, like your show. Oh, my show is Real Life Matters. Yeah, so and where can people see that? Yeah, so they can see that on um, Care Vision, and uh, we're in 22 different countries, um, Monday to Friday. We're also on Bell Five TV channel 658. I'm on from 10, 10 p.m. late and late night prime time from 10 p.m. to about maybe midnight. Uh, we do an, I do another uh, little talk show, but we uh, the, um, the guy had COVID. He got COVID, so he's coming back in January. Called Talk It Out. Okay, That's Talk good It to Out know. Chill. That's William Reinhardt. He he does that show. So um and we were and 12 million viewers watch us um watch the station on no, Monday to Friday. So I'm on Monday to Friday five days a week. Wow. Well, I've watched a couple of your episodes and I have to say it's wonderful. Like you have wonderful guests. I love the, I love your topics. Like yeah. you, you talk, you talk real life, right? You talk real stuff. So I think that, I think that's really real life and real things and capturing you, you know, your through your stories, you know, it's, it's good to interview people, but the thing is about it is that you have to capture them and make them talk because some people will sit in an interview and go, no, you got to talk. Like, yeah. If you, no, but some people talk. will just sit there and, and, and that's not an interview because they're not interacting with you. No, you got to. So tell us, so what else, what else is going on around Toronto? What can you share with my viewers that they might be interested in? Well, there's a lot of things that, uh, with around Toronto. Well, there's a lot of things happening in Toronto. Toronto is the main hub for a lot of stuff. Yes, with the, even with the virus and stuff, people are still doing things but not to the way they want to. I always tell people and the viewers for globally that, you know, here is a place where there's a lot of festivals and a lot of festivals could be happening that same day, but all of them are sold out. No, that's true. Like I know we were just at the Elma combo last two weeks ago. I think the reopening of the Elma combo. Oh, they're reopening it now. Yeah. They reopened it. I know that I went with a, a lot of money there. in there too. So they better. Oh. It was great. It, and Massey Hall's open now again. So okay. we're going to be doing some great things in music. So I really want to thank you for having me on today. Yes. I think this was, I think this was awesome. I'd love to come back on a regular basis. No, you got to come ours. back and tell us what's happening and what's going on. And, um, you know, yeah, well, I think what, we got so much history. I know Jay, it's been over 11. Oh my God. Well, I think oh. what we're going to do, Dee, is I think your show would be a great uh, plus to our platform. And if we can, uh, showcase opportunities through your show to your viewers because I'm sure I'm sure there's some of your viewers are you know they have disabled family members or veterans yes. or you know so if we can showcase and maybe nice uh, PSAs or something and opportunities to your viewers and vice versa on our platform yeah. I'd love to uh, have we our swap, viewers swap some of them. <laughs> yeah swap some of the guests there that would so be where, great so where can people um if they have to um, locate you on social media or they want to reach out to you guys, where can they find you? Sure. So first of all, you can go to our website, www.thedisabilitychannel.ca. You can also find us on your TV on Kojiko and Halton or on CTN cable in Detroit, uh, Michigan. We're also on so channel 18 and 17 in Detroit, Ron and Wisconsin. We're going to be on in New York. We're going to California for the Super Bowl, so I want, I'm trying to debut our, our today's show in California. <laughs> you got your tickets booked already? Oh, yeah, we already there. Yeah, we already got them booked. And, and then we're on, obviously, obviously, what's that? Or you won't get a spot. Oh, I know. Yeah. And we're all on all the normal social media feeds, like Twitter. We're really big on Twitter. Twitter is actually... You're big on Twitter, not on Instagram? I'm on Instagram, but Twitter, okay. like I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, and. and LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, a couple other ones, but Twitter by far has grown my business more than all of them combined. You know why? Wow. I interact on Twitter. I don't interact on Facebook with people or they don't interact with me. Instagram's just, I just find it pictures. People don't okay. really, 
Twitter is an interactive platform and I don't, and I don't, uh, I don't have any crazies on my platform. So it's all, <laughs> it's, all like, it's all ability related or, you know, positive people. So it's great because like, to be honest with you, this is how I got myself to the NFL. I just contacted them right one day. And one thing led to another. Um, there's a lot of different companies that I just, I just contacted them on Twitter and they contacted me back. And one thing led to another. Now we have relationships only because I think what I'm selling D is extremely positive. Mm-hmm. I'm selling opportunity and employment for people who probably have never had this opportunity. Well, I, I have a lot of people, a lot of family, a lot of moms and dads who talk to me after we have the initial meeting with their son or daughter, who's 21 or 20, yeah. who has spent their whole life in their bedroom until this meeting where they say to me, oh my goodness, Jay, you mean he's actually, like he, he can actually come to the studio and like, you're actually going to try and help him? Like, really? Yeah. Um, well, this is amazing. Like my son's been in his bedroom his whole life, his whole life, you know, and I thought that's where he was going to stay. Wow. That's a real difference. So what more can we expect from the disability channel? Well, I'm hoping to continue to improve the employment landscape, Mm -hmm. hoping to provide more opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you get that through education, information, you know, so, I mean, I wish, I wish big corporations or little corporations, mom and pop shops, if they hired a person with a disability and nowadays you can go back into the office, hopefully, right. Yeah. Uh, it changes your whole attitude. Cause when you see somebody working beside you, who's maybe missing an arm and they're smiling away and they're just happy to be there working and you're, you know, you might think twice about your, your own situation. Your own situation. It, it, ma- it, it, it matters. That's real life. Yes. Now that's real life. And right? it's so, home, like, why am I sad for Look at this person over here. That's right. You know, or mobility. Like I watch people. It, it takes like one of my staff members, 25 minutes to go to the washroom. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're in a wheelchair. They got to get out of the wheelchair. They got, you know, we take it for granted. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're, and why are we miserable? Like, come on, this guy, this person here took 25 minutes to go to the washroom and they're happy. They're happy. They're not asking for any assistance. They're doing their thing. They're, you know, and we just take life for granted. Sometimes it's just, it's, it's, it's a real eye opener. Keeps me yeah. humble a little bit. I try to. <laughs> That's hard sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, Jake, it's been fabulous um, having you on today and talking about the disability channel. Please go and support it. It's a great channel, you know, if for disability. You know, if, if, if you missed part of whatever Jay said that was important, you're going to have to go back and, and, and watch the interview from the start so you'll know where he came from to where on his journey where he is now. Well, so. thank you, D. Yeah. <laughs> You need to send me the link. Send me the link. We'll share it too. That'd be awesome. Yes, I will. So just stick around um, after after the show. I just want to talk to you for a minute. So everyone, okay. I do want to thank the the viewers watching uh, Real Life Matters tonight. So bye for now, everybody.